What's up, quilty people? Today we are doing a free motion quilting on a needle turn applique wall hanging. So this is small enough that it's gonna be manageable. You can play around. I got this pattern from Ann Sutton at Bunny Hill Designs. It's a single block from her 101 Maple Street pattern. And to start off with quilting on projects like this, you have to do the perimeter all the way around. Get those edges locked in about a quarter inch apart. Once that's in place, you're more familiar with your machine. Everything is nice and flat. I do a spray base on the back, get my batting nice and glued to it, and then I just set my topping, my top fabric on top. I'll pin it in place and move those around, but I don't like to have too much glue on the top. I need a little bit of flexibility because I'm going to have some dense stitching. So the first step after that is I'm going to lock in my stitches, needle down, needle up, and I'm going to start going around the borders. And I'm going to tackle my largest section first, which is the sky. And I'm going to break that into smaller pieces. I still want to have a line in place and work my design around these boundary lines that I create, but I still need to have a boundary that's locked in and then fill that in with stitches so that I don't have to work around too much warping around as the fabric shifts. There's a lot of tension issues on my fabric itself because this is hand-turned needle applique. So I was holding this in my hand and stitching it. It's not a nice flat surface like I would have had with machine stitching on all these different shapes. And for the sky, I'm just having a lot of fun with swirls, little cloud shapes, and starting to play around. When working with cloud shapes, you want to do your little bump, 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 and then I like to exit my cloud shape with a little swirl at the end. Otherwise, it stands out a little too much, and this sort of lets you visualize that this is a cloud peeking out from the wind. I think it marries together well with the rest of the swirls, and that's what I've experimented in my book. So I really like working with swirls in the background because if you work yourself into a corner, you can just swirl into another swirl and come out the other side. Here I have the tree that I can keep moving up and I have my boundaries in place and it doesn't look bad if you use those to keep building out your thread. So I've got that bottom section done and I made that border with my swirls. That worked out really well. So I'm just gonna keep adding on to this with those swirls. So I had a little tighter squirrel. squirrel. <laughs> I got woodland creatures on the mind. <laughs> but my little swirls are working out really well and it's, it's getting into my comfort zone. So, you know, when you have a variegated thread, my advice is to work in your comfort zone with the high contrasting part when that's coming up. And here I tried that cloud without the swirl. It's in that light and it's gonna stand a little more. But if you have some experimental or something that you're not familiar with, save that for the most matching part of the thread. So that's why variegated thread comes in really handy when you're doing a panel like this. Now I'm ready to travel back to that tree, so don't be afraid to just echo over those squirrels. A little bump, bump, and I'm back at the tree. Here's another effect I like with variegated thread is that I have this darker blue on the swirls and I'm gonna echo back, and that is a light blue. I think that's so pretty. It really shows off that gradient. And so you can work that in, start to travel back and forth, left to right, to really enhance that pretty thread. Here is a tight space to start working through. I'm going a little bit slower, but it's the same idea. You don't want your spirals to match too much to the space. So if it's a really tight space and you put in these really tight little spirals, it's gonna be a little more obvious. You still wanna make sure that you're matching the width on your spirals towards the rest of your project. It would be even better if I had some of those swirls be incomplete so it looked like it was going behind the fox, but I'm fine with it like this. It's really cute, and I have a little cloud next to his head. I mean, just, <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> now that I have the bottom right 
quadrant of the sky done. I'm back at the tree and I'm going up this leaf that connects it. And now I can start filling out the left side. This might be kind of a trip, but now we're on the bottom left and it's on that white fabric with little red X's. So you've got your mind trained to look at that thread and now your brain kind of has to switch into the opposite. So now my lightest and the variegated is going to blend really well and that blue stands out a lot. So looking at the spool, you would see a really light blue. I think that's not a big deal, but on white fabric, it shows up a lot. So keep that in mind. Like you can now see how wiggly my swirls really are. They're not perfect and the expectation is not for them to be perfect. I think they're still whimsical and cute. So don't let yourself get all tripped up about that. <laughs> and then I start getting a little bit tired of these swirls and I start getting experimental on this side. I made the executive decision to start throwing in some pebbling. I don't know why. Um, pebbles aren't in the sky. I don't, I don't know what I was doing. I just knew that I really like pebbles and I'm pretty good at making them. <laughs> and at this point I'm like, oh man, what am I, what has happened? They're like little grapes on a vine. This looks terrible. <laughs> and picking out pebbles when I'm on this manual mode, my stitches are really tight here and I, I wasn't going to go back and I had to try to think of how to make this work out. So then I start doing bigger pebbles. Those look good, but now my variegated thread has moved to white and you can't see them. You can just see that <laughs> swirl in the blue. <laughs> so I'm panicking a little. I echo around and I just take some time to like swirl out <laughs> and think about what I've done. And here's the thing when you make a mistake like this I think your reaction is to do something really nice next to it to like prove that you you're not terrible at everything but you really have to commit to it and put more things that are like that thing you don't like to make it blend in more and what I ended up doing was I went inside each pebble and put a tiny little swirl and that fixed it that was good like when I had swirled out and I was like, you know what? It just needs more swirls. Maybe it'll be a cluster of little tiny swirls. And that, that was it. And when I have the final quilt all done, I did a bunch more of these because I need that little cluster right there to not stand out so much. It looks great. It's such a cute little like spiral of clouds. <laughs> so it did work out. And I hope that like, this is just completely on the fly. I hope that helps you process those things that if you do something new and it's really not working how you thought it would give it a chance make the mistake a bunch more times like you really got to commit to it you got to go all in like you've made the decision and now you can't go back on it <laughs> and it does work out fine it's just more things and you can even add a lot more elements that would work too like if this pebble really was not going to work out in the long run i would start doing something that's similar like a really bouncy like feather swirl or you know there's a lot of possibilities to cover up things that we don't like about it <laughs> so you'll see that I just go on I'm echoing around the leaves and a lot of the sky is just like this I have more swirls more clouds and then these little tiny pebble swirls and then I just have to work that through each of the leaves getting really tight pebbles within all that without looking like I just was traveling in between leaves um, you know, the sky needs to look like it's in the distant background. And so that gets more tricky. I have now switched just my top thread over to brown. I got my straight edge ruler out. This is from Creative Grids. Um, it's Angela Walters Slim Ruler. And I'm making the stems now on these leaves. So I'm just doing a straight line down and then I'm branching out for the top because I have these little blobs extra on the side. And that lets me have enough puff in this leaf so it sticks out, but I'm still making sure that it's well attached in the center, that it, that hand stitching is not going to go anywhere. I didn't change my bobbin thread. It's a gray orophil thread and it will start to 
peak up a little bit when I don't lock in that um, direction change from my needle. So if I move down and then up really quick, it'll pull that bobbin thread and I'll have a little bit of that gray thread starting to peek through. And let me tell you, I've got a permanent marker that handles that really well. It's a fine tip marker. I just do a little touch on where that bobbin thread is showing and it's brown like the rest of it. And no one's gonna know. It's a wall hanging, so it's, you know, it's a permanent marker. It'll, it can wash, but with these wall hangings, they're not going anywhere, so it's fine. To move between leaves, I was doing a tie off at every stem base. And towards the end, I realized that I could just use a jump stitch. You pull the top thread through towards you and move to your next leaf and then do a little knot there. That's way more efficient. That's, that's what I recommend. I changed my thread over to green and for this grassy portion on the bottom I'm pretty much doing squiggly lines all the way up and down. I was bringing them to a point top and bottom but that gets to be a little bit too flame oriented. <laughs> so then I tried to just go ahead and work in all these squiggles and have the points only going up so it's more grassy. So try to think of seaweed when working through these kind of grassy panels. I also like that this up and down kind of breaks it apart from all this left to right swirlies from the sky. So that gives the two blocks, the colors are more defined to their space and it gives it that definition that's appropriate for its texture. You can see now that I'm putting in that little extra effort to make the grass look like it's going behind that mushroom. So it starts to squiggle down, hits that border, I travel over that mushroom and it keeps going in the background. I've switched my thread over to an ivory color and I'm going up and down this mushroom cap. It kind of reminds me of how they split and the texture that it creates from these little ridges that go towards the top and bottom seem very mushroom-like. For the stem, I didn't do a whole lot extra. I just made sure that I was stitching on it and kind of outlining just so it stays in place and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now for the star of the show, we have the fox. When it comes to animals and quilting on applique, I only know this little furry, like serpentine lines. For this one, he's standing on a swing. I have to put in the little rope later, but it's, he's in motion and he's fuzzy. So I tried to reflect that in the stitching. On the tail, it's moving up and down because that's the direction of the fur, but it's also sort of sweeping over to the right. And I think that makes him look like he is just flowing in the breeze. So I have my white thread. I switched that over to the orange for his body because I really want that to blend. And you want to see how he's, he's really puffy because I, it's a big shape that I was holding in my hand. It wasn't um, basted down with like a fusible to the fabric. So there is some motion and I just worked that in with this kind of serpentine swirling. It helps gather that fullness and let him puff where it's appropriate, but also it doesn't pucker anywhere. I don't get any of those bad like pinches where the fabric gets caught between two different pathways of thread. So that worked out really well for this little guy. I've switched back to my brown thread and at this point my thread had broken. And you can see I'm in my robe. You can kind of tell there's like this ready sleeve in the background. It's late and I was tired. And there's a little bit of advice. If your thread breaks once, it's going to break twice because when it breaks, you just want to fix it and get back to work as soon as possible. So I put it back through one of the guides and through the needle and then I get going again. It breaks a second time because when your thread breaks, there's this like spring loaded action where the thread bounces up in the top and it tends to mess up more of the guides than just what than than just unthreading through the needle. Um, so after that second break, I look at it a little better and find out where my thread bounced out of the thread path, fix that. And then I'm good to go. So I just put in, there's these little brown lines on the fox's chest. 
and I followed those and I even gave it a little pet because that feels so nice. <laughs> and then I outlined his ears. So that is it for the brown on the fox. And the last piece is to put in his swing set ropes. So the rope is gonna go from his swing base up into the leaves. I didn't follow the leaf pattern exactly, so I just kind of figured where it might go. And I really like how it's a little wider at the top, kind of like he just set it up himself. It's not straight <laughs> and it works out really well. So I'm guiding this thread from his swing to that leaf and then I'm tracing it back down. It's not perfect. My ruler shifts a little bit and that's okay. You don't want your ruler to just be like sandpaper gripped to your fabric. It's okay if it shifts a little, it makes it look a little more roped and sometimes you know your fabric is going to shift and you want your ruler to be able to shift with it so i like the way that looks and i'm feeling very good about my little fox so my little rope is done and he is just as cute as can be so with the tree complete that is the entire panel for this my little swinging fox on his little tree I hope you enjoyed this thought process <laughs> that I'm just doing out loud. And if you find this type of video enjoyable or informative, go ahead and let me know so I can adjust and <laughs> make the content that you want to see. And that is helpful to you. So, all right. Thank you so much for watching and have a great one. Bye-bye.